Do you struggle managing your money? Are sick and tired of getting to the end of the month only to find that there's absolutely zero in your bank balance and it's maybe a week or two before payday? Do you want to learn step by steps on how to manage your money? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome friends once again to the Mind, Body and Soul Tuesday show where we go a little bit deeper into a specific topic. Today we're going to be talking all about how to manage your money. I am your host, John Morris. So let's begin the show, shall we? Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Tuesday show, where we go a little bit deeper into a specific subject, from mental health, physical wellness, and spiritual stability, to the deeper topics such as anxiety, depression, weight loss, and fitness. This is the only place to go deeper in your self-discovery journey. And now, please welcome your host, Mind, Body, and Soul's very own, John Morris. Well, hey there, friends. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Today, we are talking about managing money. And I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen. Put me on pause. When you've grabbed a piece of paper and a pen, then press play. Okay, so I'm assuming now that you've done that. What I want you to do, first two things, is to write income and outgoings at the top of your page. While you're doing that, I'm just going to tell you quickly, because we've already had someone ask, what does it mean to manage money? To manage money means that you know where it's going and where it's coming from. You know how much investment that you're getting from your bank on a rate of returns, and you also know about ICEs and all sorts of other things. But today, we're going to keep it really, really simple. We've got a brand new course coming out called Financial Management. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already, um, because that's going to go into a lot more depth and a lot more detail about a lot of these different things. But here's a little crash course for you. So, at the top of your page, I want you to write income and I want you to write outgoings. Now, your income is going to be everything, and I want you to list this, but I want you to list everything that you've got that's coming in. So, for example, it might be investments, it might be bonds, it might be stocks. The majority of you will be writing about your wages, and I want you to write the numbers. So, how much you get paid a month, okay? Really important you do it monthly. Um, I want you to write if you're getting, you know, council tax benefit, or if you've got, if you've got children and you're in the United Kingdom, then you're going to have a child income tax. You're going to have all sorts of other things. So anything that you're getting when money is coming in, and I always do coming in, and then on the other side, going out. Okay? So write down those things. And if you need to pause me, pause me. Okay? So I'm assuming now that you've written down everything that you've got coming in. Now, it's sometimes a depressing side, but we'll try not to. I want you to list all of the things that are your outgoing. So, we're going to look at things like your bills, like your house, like your car, like your food, uh, clothing allowance, anything like that. Council tax, water rates, if you're in the United States, obviously this is called utilities. Anything that you're paying out that's leaving this right pocket, I want you to list right now. Now, you're going to get an accurate sum, basically, of how much you've got coming in and how much you've got going out. This always depresses people, so we're going to try and really, really encourage you um, with these things. So, again, if you need to pause me, pause me, but once you've done that, come back on. Okay, so I'm assuming now you've got a clear and accurate picture of where your money's coming from and also where it's going to. It surprises you how much money literally just darts out of the house every single month, doesn't it? I know it certainly did me when I looked. Now what I want you to do, if you turn over your page, I want you to list a few different areas, okay? Because in his book, Profit First, Mike Michalowicz, and he talks about this from a business point of view, I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer and I want to talk about it from your point of view. So, in his book, as I said, Profit First, Mike Michalowicz lists all these different areas and the categories, basically, of where we're putting money into. So what I want you to list is this. I want you to list your bills. I want you to write it down. So list, uh, list bills, list savings, list pension, list leftovers, and list emergency fund. You should have five things there. Bills. Savings, pension, leftovers, emergency fund. Okay, so this is important now to get clear, and I'll try and speak as clearly and concisely as I can. Your bills are everything, like I said earlier on, that's leaving the house. So I want you to write down how much you spend each month on your house, on your mortgage, or on your rent, okay? I want you to write how much you spend each month on electricity and gas how much money you spend in council tax or utilities, how much you spend a month on food, okay? I want you to also write 
how much money you've got for savings. Now, I'm going to do a simple figure with you in a moment, and then how much your pension is. Now, if you're in the UK, this will already be deducted, unless you're self-employed, from your uh, wage slip. So you'll be able to see clearly on there, okay? Now, I'm going to speak hypothetically here, and I'm going to do a very general sum, and I'm going to say each and every single person earns $2,000, pounds, yen, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, whatever it might be, um, a month, okay? Nice and simple sum, easy for my mind. Okay, so let's say your bills are £450 a month for your mortgage, uh, you know, £100 a month in maybe your council tax, maybe another 120 let's say another £100 for your uh, electricity and for your gas. So, you know, we've got, what, 450 for mortgage, 550 650 so far, okay? And uh, say you can maybe put another 50 in there a month, so that's, you know, uh, you know what another, uh, what did I say, five, six, seven hundred, okay? And then you've got your food, so that's maybe another 20 pounds a week, so that's 100 pounds, so you're looking at 800 pounds there, which leaves you with 1,200 pounds, okay? Okay, so th those are all your bills, and you've listed all of those out. Maybe you've got your internet and obviously your phone line and everything else. That's there, you, you can break all those things down into miscellaneous. But say you, you've spent £800, dollars, yen, whatever, on your bills, okay? Then I want you to look at how much you pay in your pension. Now, if you pay a private pension, you may pay £100, pound, yen, um, per month for your pension. If it's a private pension, if it isn't, then, you know, maybe start thinking about that. I'll touch on that later on. So there's, you know, you spent 900 okay, that's 900 whatever, going out, okay? So you've got leftovers of 1100 so I want you to take, you know, 30% now of that 1100 and I want you to put that into savings, okay? Because you've got a plan now, and we're talking about things like, okay, what about if you want to go on holiday? What about if you want a new car? What about if you want, you know, a nice fancy dress or a lovely suit or clothes or whatever it might be, okay? So those go into your savings, okay? Then you've got your leftovers, so let's say, I don't know. Okay, so for maths sake, you put 30% in, which is 330 pounds, and you are left with 770, if my maths is correct, okay? So you're left with 770. You've put in your pension, you put in your savings, you put in your bills. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take 500, 500 pounds, yen, whatever, currency, okay? And I want you to put it into the emergency fund. Now, why on earth would I want you to put that money into an emergency fund? Well, simple. What happens, God forbid, but if your house gets struck by a lightning? It happens. What about if there's a big freak storm and you need to repair the roof? What about if you have a plumbing or electrical fault and you end up with a flood in your bathroom that goes down into your kitchen? What about if something catastrophic happens? Like in the United States, obviously you've got to pay for medical care and everything. What happens if you suddenly get taken ill and you've got to go into hospital, okay? So each month, if you're building this up into your emergency fund, do not touch it, okay? It is there in case of emergency. Now, that should leave you, if my maths is correct, with about £270 leftovers. Now, you can choose how you spend this, okay? Now, a lot of people I know may go on a shopping spree or a lot of people might go, you know, a little bit crazy and do some wild things. What about if you put that into maybe some bonds, where you buy, basically buy them, you can buy them for, for £10 over here in the UK, and each month names get drawn, and you may win a little bit of money on there. It's called an investment, a long-term bond. And it doesn't cost you anything every month. But you can look into different areas where you can help your money grow. You could save that money, you could put that money down into savings. Or you could treat yourself. The problem is, a lot of people get a lump sum every single month of, two, again, like I say, $1,500 to $2,000 pound in. And what often happens is they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll pay this bill, pay that bill, and whatever's left over, I'll go buy myself a nice new coat at 50 pounds. I'll go buy myself, you know, uh, you know, four bottles of vodka. Okay, and I'm speaking hypothetically. I, I don't drink, so, you know, I'm speaking hypothetically. And before you know it, money flies out of the window and people do get to the end of the month and have literally nothing left to live on. Nothing left to, you know, in case something happens or what goes on. So, with these five categories now, sorry, five categories, not ten categories, um, you 
have different categories which you do not touch, okay? Bill money is for bill money, savings money is for savings money, pension is for pension, because you've got to think about the future, you know? And again, your emergency money is for emergency. Do not have the discipline, develop the discipline to have control over yourself, not to touch and dip into these different funds. It's really important that you develop that. And if you can't develop that, look at getting a financial advisor or your bank. Set up different accounts and say, right, I want my money to go into this account and into that account and so on and so on. The next point just before we wrap up today is what happens when you don't budget? Well, exactly like I said then. Look at some of the world's most famous people that have gone bankrupt. You can look at Johnny Depp, okay, because his accounting company didn't pay his accounts correctly. He needed to be more in control of his finances. Look at Mike Tyson, he was the world's f most famous boxer. He ended up going bankrupt. Elvis Presley, one of the world's most famous singers, and he ended up singing at some sleazy bar, basically. You know, look at even Ric Flair, you know, world famous wrestler. Unfortunately, went bankrupt numerous times. When you don't budget, when you don't micromanage your finances, what often happens is, and don't worry, sometimes things can just happen, okay? But if you are more prepared for it, if you are micromanaging your finances, it's gonna have less of an impact than if you take your eye completely off the ball and allow somebody else to do it. People make mistakes and when it's not their own money, they're not that bothered as to what the mistake is. It's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, but it's you that's gonna to have to front everything else. If you are struggling with how to budget or, or micromanaging your money or anything that I've said today, and you want to get help, get in touch with me, either comment in the section below or get in touch with us at thebattleswealthface.com, okay? I'll even put the, the direct email in the comment section below so you can get in touch with me. We offer business coaching for beginners. Like I've said before, we offer also personal life coaching. I can walk you through these things step by step and if there's something beyond my level of expertise, then I know people that are gonna be able to do this as well, from financial advisors to all sorts of you know accountants and whatnot. And you're in good hands, but don't leave this to chance. It's really important that you micromanage your finances, know where everything's going, because when the things hit the fan, you wanna know that at least your money is safe and at least you are secure in going forward. Well, folks, that's all we've got the time for today. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Tuesday Show. Please leave a comment in the section below if you've got any questions for us. Hit that thumbs up as always. Let, let us know that you enjoyed the show. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that really helps them and saves them from a lot of hassle and a lot of trouble in managing their own finances. And of course, I've been your host, John Morris. This has been the Mind, Body, and Soul Tuesday Show where we've got that little bit deeper. We'll see you next Tuesday, folks. Don't forget to check out this Friday show for another special guest. And come and visit us at thebattleswealthface.com if you need help. And we all need help from time to time. The difference between success and failure is the amount of help that we either accept or the amount of help that we know is available to us. And we're always here to help. Have a great week, folks. I'll see you soon.